next speaker is the is a very uh, famous individual. He is the host of the Joe Thomas in the Morning Show on WCHV. Please welcome Joe Thomas. And how lucky it was me that my name happened to be Joe Thomas when they were looking for a host for that show. <laughs> One of the uh, downsides of going later in the program is some of your good stuff gets taken by earlier speakers if you don't coordinate. So I want to thank Jim Lark for shortening my address just a little bit. So much is going on just behind us in the city of Charlottesville offices where discussions are made rego regarding what Professor Lark was speaking about, regarding restricting speech. This isn't the first time we've gathered here on December 15th and discussed things like suggested free speech zones, which we see rampantly being popped up on college campuses so that those easily offended don't have to be subjected to opinions and or speeches that they find offensive or are troublesome. Perhaps the most troubling event of this year is what Dr. Lark brought up is the ACLU's equivocation towards its defense for what unfortunately seems patently political reasons. That the, the political party that they frequently find themselves aligned with no longer believes in the freedom of speech. Ironically, it's the same political party that across the country has been removing the name Jefferson from their annual dinners. I guess rubber chicken and Thomas Jefferson don't go together like they used to. But it goes beyond the First Amendment. Second Amendment, Terry McAuliffe wishes to bring forth legislation that would allow municipalities to arbitrarily restrict our Second Amendment rights. And ironically, it seemed like that's exactly why we had the Second Amendment rights in case there were out of control events that needed defending. Fourth Amendment rights, Patriot Act on down, warrantless wiretaps and surveillance. But I don't know how many of you are parents, but if you are or if you've had a parent, you've heard the phrase, because I said so. And I think sometimes we get caught up in, you know, quoting the Bill of Rights and, and ostensibly saying, because it said so to young people. And, and I want to take a quick moment, before I forget, to give kudos to the J.T. Henley Middle School here in Charlottesville, which just took the silver medal with the Montpelier Center for the Constitution's annual Constitution Day event, in which they were all brought to Richmond and they, uh, you know, schools from around the Commonwealth, and J.T. Henley Middle School took a silver medal uh, in its understanding of the Constitution. So maybe, if we can hang on long enough, there is some hope on the horizon. But as a parent, I've caught myself saying, because I said so. And, and I think we do this with the Bill of Rights. We don't delve into, as most kids want to understand, why we protect free speech. But he said something mean. He said something that's hurtful. Well, Someday, you could be the one that's deemed to be saying something hurtful. Why am I not allowed to do whatever I want without consequence? Because somebody else might want to do what they want, and at some point, those two wants will come up against one another. These are the responsibilities that go into these rights. Madison was desperately afraid of a democracy. I have, to some controversy, compared democracy to fluoride, uh, and then equivocating that back down to compare it to sugar. Um, having survived a scare of cancer, I've talked to many nutritionists that say the American diet's predilection to sugar leads to an awful lot of cancer development. Cancer cells love eating sugar, and we eat an awful lot of sugar. That said, the human body needs a certain amount of sugar. So we can't go completely without sugar but you need to have the right amount. And so when Madison was crafting the Bill of Rights at Monroe's insistence, brokering the peace that would get this country even started, 
They didn't want a democracy. Rick Sincere, who writes the Sub-Saharan Monitor online, you should check it out, spent a very wonderful time talking about some of the troubles in Zimbabwe just recently and what happens when democracy is used to create dictatorship. Adolf Hitler became the Chancellor of Germany by winning an election. The Soviet Union, during its existence, held more federal elections than the United States did. The idea of democracy is often a banner we march under, under what really is mob rule. And Madison got that. And Matt Madison put down these Bill of Rights to protect us from mob rule to make sure that even the minority voices could be heard. And that's what we need to do, is we need to talk about the why of the Bill of Rights, not just the what of the Bill of Rights. Why are your things protected? Why is the Fourth Amendment, to somebody without certainly the pedigree of a Dr. Lark, obviously easily applicable to the internet and to our computers? These things can be easily ex explained to our kids. If we do so, we'll wind up with more schools like J.T. Henley Middle School, who shocked everyone and came home to Charlottesville with a silver medal, knowing the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. So hopefully the millennials that Dr. Lark sees on the UVA grounds, and that little by little I think are getting frustrated with the political parties that have dragged the ACLU away from their mission, and the NAACP away from their mission will be seen for who they are. And maybe this is a great future for the Libertarian Party being a party of freedom and liberty. You'll find disaffected Democrats and dis disaffected Republicans and at some point come together and say, we really should get somebody in here who's not interested in political power and political authority. Thank you all. Happy birthday, Bill of Rights. She's still looking good at 226. And uh, we'll see you here next year. Uh, and maybe next year they can get the wind blowing a little bit so it could be a little cooler. And uh, thank you. Uh, he left already, but thank him again for us for bringing those wreaths up to the, uh, to the uh, soldiers. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I want to thank everyone for coming out in this wonderful, wonderful, brisk weather. I uh, want to leave you with this thought. Uh, freedom is hard to win and easy to lose. So let's work hard and double our efforts to keep the light of liberty shining brightly for future generations. Thank you.